everyone. A very pleasant day to be able to see you all again. And here is Azenius. Ramzorta and the King of Cambodia discuss economic and trade cooperation. President of the Republic of Timor-Leste, Jose Ramos Horta, meet with the King of Cambodia, Narodom Sihamoni, to discuss economics and trade cooperation between the two countries. Ramos Horta said, Timor-Leste's accession to ASEAN is important, as Timor-Leste will be able to take part in decision-making, which is a strategic option to dynamize diplomatic relations, regional commerce, and much more. I talk with the king today, he's an artist as well. The king, the government, the parliament, the senate, as well as the people of Cambodia have shown their support to us a lot. Today marked the history of our 20th year of diplomacy with Cambodia. I've also spoke about enhancement of economic and commercial relation. To reforce relations economic and commercial. This meeting also discussed the joining of Timor-Leste to ASEAN as Cambodia supports the accession of Timor-Leste in the integration onto this regional organization in 2023. Timor-Leste and Cambodia will sign an air service agreement to allow monthly flights from Phnom Penh to Dili to facilitate passengers from China to Timor-Leste, where geographically Cambodia is near China. On the same occasion, Jose Ramos Horta also invited Cambodia's king to visit Timor-Leste. Timor-Leste's president and Cambodia high entity analyzed the global and regional situation. Timor-Leste's president, Jose Ramos Horta, met with the Prime Minister of Cambodia, Deputy Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces, Cambodia's Army General, Lieutenant General Hun Manet, and several businessmen to analyze the global and regional situation, what has happened recently, and what will be in the future. It's an informal meeting as we shared views and I wanted to hear my appreciation and analysis on the global situation, especially Ukraine, US politics, China and the Timorese relationship. According to the head of state, Cambodia's Prime Minister Hun Sen expresses his support for Timor-Leste accession to the ASEAN and Timor-Leste participating in the regional organization as a way of diplomacy contribution to other countries' issues, such as diplomacy contribution to the issue of Myanmar. When Timor-Leste joins ASEAN, Timor-Leste can fully contribute to the diplomacy in the context of ASEAN to see how it can contribute to finding a solution to the problem of Myanmar. Because when the issue of Myanmar is unsolved and grave, it will negatively impact it ASEAN's credibility. Jose Ramos Horta recalls the suffering of the Myanmar leader and people and his promise to strengthen the partnership with ASEAN to solve a conflict through dialogue. Timor-Leste head of state three days visit to Cambodia from 19 to 21 of October 2022 to fulfill the invitation of Cambodia's king, Narodom Sihamoni, in order to strengthen the bilateral relationship with Timor-Leste. Eight killed after bombs inside parcel exploded at Myanmar's biggest jail. <laughs> A witness said bombs inside parcels exploded at Myanmar's biggest jail, prompting soldiers to return fire in a confrontation in which at least eight people were killed, state media and state-owned MRTV said. The explosions were caused by mines inside parcels that killed three prison officers and five visitors and wounded 18 people. Myanmar has been in chaos since the military overthrew an elected government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's party and launched a brutal crackdown on dissent. Myanmar's military junta's home affairs ministers, General Sue Tut, visited the explosion site. According to the media that, the seriously injured were evacuated from the prison, while others were treated at nearby shops. A number of cases scheduled to be heard in the court next door were cancelled. Activist groups condemned the attack and called for perpetrators to be held accountable for their actions. Indonesia reports 99 child deaths after acute kidney injury this year. A health ministry official said close to 100 children in Indonesia have died from acute kidney injury this year as a team of experts investigate the spike in cases. 
Health Ministry spokesperson Muhammad Sheryl said Indonesian authorities have identified 206 cases of AKI among children with 99 fatalities. Hingga saat ini, jumlah kasus yang dilaporkan. Authorities have identified 206 cases of acute kidney injury amongst children out of the 22 provinces who have reported, with 99 fatalities recorded. Yang melaporkan dengan tingkat kematian 99 kasus atau 48. The rise in fatalities comes as Gambia's government probes the death of 70 children from AKI linked to paracetamol syrups, which contained excessive levels of diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol. Officials at Indonesia's Food and Drug Agency said those products were not available locally, and the ingredients they were compromised of had now been banned from all child medicinal syrups sold in the country. Modified motor taxi helps the community from the Philippines float. Motorbike taxi drivers in a Philippine town have come up with a clever way to weather resistant floats by using strips of metal and steel tubes to elevate their vehicles. Russell Lopez, as modified motor taxi drivers said, floats affect them and with modified motorbike helping people to evacuate because small vehicles cannot be passed on the road. Baha. The floats do affect us. For us motorbike taxi drivers, our vehicles are not made to cross float waters. So what we did is we modified them in order to make living despite having year-long floats. The modification creates seats up to a meter high, helping commuters to stay clear of the knee to waste deep floats. The local government of Bulacan did not respond to a request for a comment, but a press release on its website said it was working on a dredging project for its rivers to help with the floating. Meanwhile, many of those living in Hagonoi say the modified motorbikes have become a godsend for them to go about their daily lives. Malaysia to hold next general election on November 19, 2022. The Election Commission said about 21 million Malaysians eligible to vote will head to the polls on November 19, 2022 for the country's next general election in the contest that the ruling grafted tainted party hopes to will strengthen its hold on power. SPR telah menetapkan tarikh -tari the Election Commission Chairman Abdul Ghani Saleh told a news conference that campaigning will be held for two weeks and candidates will have to file their nomination to be lawmaker on November 5. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub, who has been nominated as the United Malays National Organization's Prime Minister candidate again, dissolved Parliament on October 10 and called for a snap poll saying an election will end years of political instability. Meanwhile, analysts said AMNO may have the edge in the next month's election as the opposition is in disarray and as the turnout is expected to be lower due to voter apathy and the ongoing monsoon season. Thailand Finance Minister says economic growth could reach 3.5% this year and needs rate hikes. Finance Minister said Thailand should see economic growth of 3.0 to 3.5 percent this year, driven by its key export and tourism sectors, a recovery that is best supported by gradual interest rate hikes. We have assessed the economic condition together with the Bank of Thailand that the economy is in recovery, and given the two recent rate hikes by the central bank, it's quite clear that there will be a gradual policy tightening. The central bank's governor has always said that we want to be confident that the economy will recover and it will not add too much cost on businesses. Arkom said the economy was expected to grow 3.7% next year. He expected tourist arrivals of 8 to 10 million this year, which will double to 20 million in 2023, about half of the pre-pandemic figure.
Southeast Asia's second largest economy is expected to return to its pre-pandemic economic activity levels late this year or early next year, as the central bank predicts, lagging neighbors as tourism has only recently begun to recover. Japan to take decisive actions after yen reaches 150 against dollar. Japanese Finance Minister Sunichi Suzuki told reporters he will take decisive actions against excessive sharp yen moves after it tumbled past the key psychological level of 150 to the US dollar. We cannot tolerate excessive and rapid currency moves driven by speculation action, so we will pay attention to market volatility and take decisive actions when there are developments. This idea has not changed. We will continue to watch currency moves meticulously and with a sense of urgency. The yen's break of 150 against the dollar took it to its weakest level since August 1990, keeping investors on high alert in case Tokyo steps into markets again to support the fragile currency. The dollar has surged some 30% against the yen this year, despite Japan spending up to a record 2.8 trillion yen or $19.7 billion intervening the foreign exchange market in September to support its currency. Thank you very much, folks. We are going to see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Have a lovely weekdays ahead.